not that early of an age, but a pretty early one, James DeGabriel had two interests, accounting and being in a rock band. In the 1970s, Jim got his first break in the music industry when he tried out for the band Menudo. Jim and the band enjoyed some success until Jim's voice cracked like an unknown executive under interrogation and he was banished from the band. Jim's second band was The Village People. He created the character of Leatherman, which quickly became a fan favorite. Unfortunately, during the recording of In the Navy, Jim refused to change into a sailor outfit saying, my artistic integrity does not allow me to compromise. He was not out of music for long. While at a bar in New York City, Rudy's Bar and Grill for example, a delightful bar in Hell's Kitchen that is a pretty good hot dog special, he met Dee Snyder, who asked him to join his band Twisted Sister. Regrettably, Snyder became jealous after the rock and roll accountant began to receive more than his share of attention from groupies. There was also a huge fight over songwriting credit for We're Not Going to Take It. After a two-month court battle, he was ejected from the band and told to keep at least 500 yards at all The times. last band Jim was in was Devo. Jim never fit in with this band and was asked to leave after only two months. According to the press release from the rest of the band, De Gabriel was just a little too weird for Devo heads to accept. De Gabriel's final appearance as a musician was at the 2004 Super Bowl. De Gabriel and Janet's action put together a performance that will be remembered for decades. Not remembered is the fact that the Patriots beat the Panthers 32-29, to the Dolphins mysteriously absent from that contest. CBS, MTV, and NFL officials quickly apologized and sought to distance themselves from Jackson and DeGabriel. Both performers blamed the incident on a wardrobe malfunction, but very few people accepted this explanation. After these experiences, DeGabriel became bitter towards the music industry and decided to seek revenge. He went back to school and received his degree in accounting. While in school, he planned on getting back at the industry that rejected him as a young man. Realizing that his career in rock had not worked out, he turned to pop music. He started an accounting firm and used his music industry connections to sign as many bands as possible. Among the clients that James signed were Justin Timberlake, Miley Cyrus, and Peaches. James DeGabriel and Justin Timberlake originally met when DeGabriel attended an in-sync concert in hopes of signing the band as one of his initial clients. He claimed that this whole reason he went to the concert was to sign the band. However, an eyewitness spotted James performing dance moves that supposedly mimicked those used in NSYNC music videos. Unfortunately, James' plan to sign NSYNC did not work. According to Timberlake, NSYNC band member Lance Bass claimed that he had become uncomfortable with James' presence when DeGabriel approached him numerous times, begging him for help with hitting the high notes, which Bass optimistically interpreted as a request for singing lessons to attempt to restore his music career. A stroke of good fortune struck James when, moments before halftime during the 2004 Super Bowl, Timberlake's voice suddenly became hoarse and he was unable to sing. Recognizing talent when he saw it, Justin asked Jim to fill in for him. Jim gladly accepted under the condition that he would manage Timberlake's finances since Timberlake was now a solo artist and former band member Bonnie Lass was no longer an obstacle. It was a win-win situation for James as he planned to resurrect his music career with Janet Jackson and put his accounting degree to work by scamming Justin Timberlake out of millions of dollars when Justin became his client. Regrettably, Super Bowl 38 was the last time James would be seen performing live. His music career faltered quickly afterwards due to his role in the infamous wardrobe malfunction stunt. However, DeGabriel now had access to Justin Timberlake's finances. Since his music career was over, DeGabriel turned his full attention to putting his accounting degree to the test. With Peaches and Timberlake as clients, James had plenty of money within his reach. The devious accountant routinely prepared balance sheets, income statements, and statements of cash flows for his clients. Since Justin's popularity was soaring, James found it easiest to embezzle extra money from him. Slowly, the Gabriel began stealing money from Timberlake. Since Justin was constantly touring, he never noticed the petty cash that was routinely siphoned off by the Gabriel. Then, at the beginning of 2008, James decided it would be a good idea to take a healthy dip into Justin's transportation and food funds. After all, James knew that Justin would be too busy rehearsing and practicing new dance moves to trace any paper trail back to him. Over the course of that fateful year, DeGabriel deviously pocketed over $3 million from Timberlake's account. 
However, the high-flying rock and roll accountant world would soon come crashing down. Having spent $6 million on total operating expenses for his 2007 tour, Timberlake became suspicious and was curious to know how he could have spent so much more cash in just one year later. In 2008, Justin attended Super Bowl XL to see the Rolling Stones perform at halftime. Upon completing their set of Start Me Up, Rough Justice, and Satisfaction, they invited Timberlake back to their luxury box to finish watching the game. The Dolphins weren't in that contest either. Go Dolphins! As the band and Timberlake talked, Mick Jagger stressed the importance of quality financial management. Justin mentioned that he had been wary of the financial statements provided to him by the Gabriel, especially since they were published on toilet paper. Jagger, a one-time student of the London School of Economics, offered to examine Timberlake's finances and introduced him to the tactic of comparing cash flows from operations to net income. Jagger noticed that Timberlake's net income and operating cash flows had a substantial difference between them, and that was an automatic red flag. Mick Jagger was appalled by what he saw on Timberlake's income statement. Food expenses alone had jumped over 20% of the total operating expenses for 2008, and it was only February. It was then that Justin confessed who his accountant was. Mick was horrified to learn that his old classmate, James the Gabriel, was up to his old tricks again. Jagger explained to the hapless Timberlake that net earnings did not jive with the income from operations on the statement of cash flows. The difference between the net earnings and net cash from operations was a staggering $3 million. The very next day, Mick and Justin confronted Gabriel. After turning the stolen funds and making several public apologies, the rock and roll accountant was banned forever from the entertainment industry and banished to the swamps of New Jersey. He was last seen trolling a nearby college campus, humming to himself and spontaneously breaking out into familiar pop dances. 